Prior to Raw this week, there was a lot of reports that Vince McMahon was backstage at Raw this week. Of course, I think that's why Triple H started the show with an earlier today with a car driving in. A lot of people instantly on Twitter were saying that was Vince in the car. It wasn't. It was the bloodline. Well, Solo Sokoa would face Kevin Owens in the first match tonight that was ended by a DQ after Jimmy Uso got involved. There was a really bad moment in the match where Kevin Owens looked legitimately hurt after it looked like he took a real low blow by mistake. Honestly, that looked like it hurt. Pure sympathy to Kevin Owens. The fight was on afterwards. Sami Zayn would make the save. And then this story would play out through Raw. Sami offered the hand to KO. KO said no. He walked away. We'd get a backstage segment where Sami was trying to talk sense into his old friend, Kevin Owens. Kevin would tell Sami to go back to Roman Reigns. Sami would walk away. And then during a segment with Rick Boogs and a like, yeah, I can't do that. We would actually see in the background Kevin Owens talking to Cody Rhodes. Subtly was Cody Rhodes trying to convince Kevin Owens to help Sami Zayn. But while we're distracted with what Kevin Owens was doing, we should have been wondering what Jay Uso was doing. Because he returned, seemingly picked Sami Zayn over his own brother. One super kick later. Oh my god, this trolled the crowd hard. The bloodline beatdown was on and it was Cody Rhodes who made the save. Now, I like this because that layer before, Cody and Kevin talking. Cody is sticking up for Sammy. Now, will Kevin do the same? The bloodline is reunited. What happens next? Friday Night Smackdown's about to be big. This is Things You Might Have Missed from WWE Raw. If you haven't already, hit the like button. It really helps the videos out. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. He's back. John Cena returned to Monday Night Raw. Honestly, I, this segment was great. Cena coming back really emotional for John Cena. I love that Theory wasted no time going out there, doing exactly what he promised, confronting John Cena, and the promo was gold. Of course, Cena saying no to Theory's challenge for WrestleMania originally, basically saying, you know, if I beat you, you're finished. Everything you are is finished. Cena broke the fourth wall talking about WWE, pumping in crowd noise because no one cares about Austin Theory. Theory would bring up Cena's bald spot, his acting, everything like that. This promo set up WrestleMania perfectly. It ended, of course, with John Cena saying, yes, the crowd behind him. The match is on at WrestleMania. As Cena was leaving, Cena would bring out Cody Rhodes, who is ready for WrestleMania. The hug and the handshake between the two. Who would have thought John Cena and one of the EVPs of AEW would be shaking hands on a Monday Night Raw? That's pretty big, you know. Bobby Lashley in a backstage segment would call out Bray Wyatt again this week. Of course, they showed you what happened Friday where Lashley calling out Bray and the whole Uncle Howdy thing. Note from Twitter and Discord, multiple people referencing the fact they edited out the scream of Uncle Howdy that practically told you it's Bo Dallas. <laughs> and although there was no sign of Bray or Howdy tonight, when Lashley challenged Bray and said, you're not a man, are you? The logo would appear on the screen. And then as he continued to talk about Bray Wyatt, right at the end, the logos would appear. Again, when he referenced about Bray Wyatt being a man. Again, a lot of people pointing out the fact that Bray would refer to the Fiend as the Fiend is no man. So the fact that Lashley's making this whole thing about Bray being a man... Could it be the direction that this story is going in? Potentially. Again, we have to wait and see. I do wonder if the fact they're playing this out on both Raw and on Smackdowns, if that's the reason why this is being stretched out longer. Because instead of just three shows to go to WrestleMania, they potentially got up to six. Of course we got to talk about this segment. Seth and Logan Paul. Oh my god, this was fire. Not just because Seth Rollins was dressed as a peppermint swell, but because the crowd was so insanely into this segment. The singing for Seth's theme, the booing of Logan Paul. Logan 
Give him his dues. He gets this business. He played into that hill roll so well. The match looks to be on for WrestleMania. The segment ended with one lucky shot by Logan Paul and a bye-bye bitch to Seth Rollins to end that segment. Honestly, from start to finish, if you didn't watch Raw, there's one segment you have to see. It's this one. A WWE actually setting up a new women's tag team. Love it. Adam Pearce would walk into shot behind Chelsea Green and Carmella and dude was like, no, F that, I'm out of here. <laughs> I love that. That was so freaking cool. Of course, Chelsea would accompany Carmella to ringside tonight for a match with Bianca. Didn't really help her out as Bianca Belair would pick up the win, beating Carmella. The post-match beatdown was on on the EST, but of course it was Oscar in high heels that came out spraying the mist in Chelsea Green's face. Honestly, love that. And we got the return of dribbling Oscar. This is like an evolved form of Oscar, right? I love this, honestly. This is going to be a new thing now on things you might have missed for sure. <laughs> Edge would show up on Raw tonight. And this was good. He cost Finn Balor his match with Johnny Gargano. Great match, by the way. Huge for Gargano to get a win over Finn leading up to WrestleMania. I love the fact Judgment Day didn't know what was going on because Edge's entrance lured them up the entrance ramp. Nice storytelling there. And you've got to praise WWE for always getting the WrestleMania logo in shot. You've got to think, they've got to be setting up Demon versus Edge. They've got to be. The way Edge is sort of getting one up on Finn... I mean, come on. I really want to see the Demon Balor back. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Omos would squash Dolph Ziggler tonight on Monday Night Raw. I like this, though, because it was actually a setup. Mustafa Ali getting Dolph Ziggler this match, then being ringside, basically as a cheerleader for Dolph. It didn't really go his way. This positive vibes, heelish Ali really works, by the way. We then got a promo from MVP. Mocking Brock Lesnar, saying the Nigerian giant will tame the beast at WrestleMania. I like the fact you include two stories there in one. Nice little segment. The 2K23 DLCs were officially revealed. People like Bray Wyatt, Gallows and Anderson, Wade Barrett, Scott and Rick Steiner, all included and more, all on screen. That comes out soon. Honestly, I cannot wait to play as Bray. The new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, Becky and Lita, were there tonight. Of course, they wanted to thank Trish Stratus. How the hell does Trish just never age, man? They was confronted by damage control. Trish would take the forefront and say, I'm not retired anymore, basically. And she challenged them to a six-woman match at WrestleMania, which seemed to be accepted by Bayley. But I'd really like to know if Trish and Lita hang around for a while. Could they compete in the Queen of the Ring? We found out tonight WWE King and Queen of the Ring returns in May from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. I can't wait. I love King and Queen of the Rings. Genuinely, a 10 out of 10 Raw. I love this show. Absolutely great. Let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comments down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Never miss an upload. Like the video, share the video, and I'll see you, as always, next time. Peace!